Hello and welcome lovely sword people to the finals of Sword and Buckler at our Torneo di Spada 2022. The rule set mainly focuses on not getting hit and only awards points as a secondary condition. And here we have the first semi-final of Marius on the left versus me on the right. And you see we start quite with a lot of action because we are fighters that of course know each other for quite a long time. Both from the same club and here you see me pairing his strike with the Metsumandrito striking to the leg above the knee, so scoring one point and my first unharmed bout. You see us also taking the center of the ring quite quickly because space is valuable. Not only space with the blade but also space in the ring that gives you options to draw back and while here my buckler parry isn't quite landing so we get both points accordingly. Again, fast taking the center of the ring and then trying to feint out a committed action of our opponent. Here I just missed the opponent's hand but as I get in I get clipped beneath my buckler in the leg so I have to retake my honor so to speak. And that's something the historical fancy master Manciolino described in his treatise. You have one step with one action to regain your honor by getting a hit onto your opponent. And here I just fail doing that because Marius does a great job of parrying my after blow. So now he's actually in the lead. We both have one bout unharmed and he scores the point lead. So now it counts. Last bout and you see there are no freebies and I try to provoke him with a reverso to the hand parrying in guardi di testa so a hanging parry and then striking low beneath his guard scoring the final point and advancing to the final. So let's proceed to the second semi-final between Alex and Lorenzo. And let me just set one thing straight. Judging is hard, especially with Sword and Buckler where the actions can be really quick and hidden by the shield, the buckler. So while Alex lands a thrust to Lorenzo's torso here while getting struck in the head in the meantime, the judges don't see that thrust and that's something to be aware of. Since cuts make a louder noise than thrusts, they're easier spotted by the judges. So we see a couple of nice exchanges here, but Alex withdrawing, still withdrawing and then leaving the ring, scoring Lorenzo the second three points and his second unharmed bout in this match, making it really an uphill battle for Alexander to win this fight now. Basically, they fence different matches. While Alexander needs to get clean heads, for Lorenzo it would suffice to just double his way through. And that's a very common weakness of rule sets that have a direct comparison. So basically, if you want to make eliminations and you add up points over different bouts, you can't get rid of this incentive problem. But it suffices to say that all these fences in the finals made their way through a hard pool phase where that incentive was not present. So you, you, you see still some really nice fencing of both participants exchanging blows, covering, getting in there and then getting maybe a bit too impatient getting the double but Lorenzo scores also a nice buckler strike to the head but again doesn't really matter so basically Lorenzo at this point has won this fight. Alex can still get some honor back and he tries just that approaching carefully drawing Lorenzo in and then cutting his arm as Lorenzo tries to take the torso. So Alex takes the final bout and now we see him and Marius duke it out in the third place match. Again you can see Marius taking quickly ground and then both participants getting into a half shield or Guadi tester like position covering very high which Alex takes the opportunity to strike below the cover of his opponent, scoring his first point. So after you 
take the middle, I would usually advise against just being statically there because out of that stillness good things almost never happen because your opponent is ready and waiting for any committed attack of yourself so you actually want to take a meaningful advantage and not just rush in Marius tries to provoke high here but Alex takes just the torso once again so both go one point and Alex is still in the lead we also once again see here a little fight of arming sword against side sword and here I really have to commend Michael for seeing that thrust which is really hard and really quick to see. So great job by him and Alex scores his next point which should be actually three points but well he got the unharmed bout which is much more important anyway. So. Now it gets really hard for Marius and he needs to score an unharmed bout. So he tries that by engaging at a really high range first, but then once again he tries to get in there, get low, but his hit to the leg landed flat, so it isn't counted while Alex counter is, so that high risk maneuver didn't pay off. So we are in the last bout of the third place match, and Marius tries again to go for that leg snipe and Alex nicely counters by stepping back, hitting the hand in the same tempo and so wins third place. And now to the finals, Lorenzo versus me. And I think if you proceed this far into the tournament, you can make a little show. So a little flourish by me to get things started, taking some ground, trying to provoke a couple of actions by Lorenzo and here I try to press him, threatening a thrust from Cingiare Porte di Ferro, parrying his blow and striking to his hand, scoring the first point. While in sparring you want to mix things up, in tournament I would advise just keep working what's working. And so I try again to press him, drawing out an attack that I can then cover, striking low to the legs and covering myself with a buckler high. So while I'll also gain ground quite quickly, I at least try to make use of sideways movement or trying to lure my opponent in by drawing myself back to then use the tempo of the opponent moving forward where obviously they can't move back anymore to then get a strike in. But here Lorenzo does a nice job of covering the first blow high, covering with the buckler against my reverso behind his blade. But then I use a similar provocation by Reverso to the hand into a Guardia di Testa parry at the leg hit like I did in the last bout against Marius. So at this point I knew that I couldn't lose this final anymore. And I want to use that opportunity to talk a bit about sharpness. Not sharpness of the blade, but sharpness of the mind. Which is, I think, in any tournament or any fighting, even more important. So here I just fail after my Metsu Mandrito parry and Riverso counter to the head to cover myself with a buckler. A mistake that basically cost me my life in that exchange. And here you see again why you shouldn't just stick around and play at the end of the measure of your opponent because, well, that again could cost you your head. So Renzo proceeds to take that final exchange and I really have to say I enjoyed these final fights really quite a lot. Especially making a few of my interpretations work in that high competitive environment. So if you liked the video remember to share, like and subscribe and I would like to thank you all for watching. Until next time, take care. Ciao!